Sometimes the words of lost sheep and lost coins are so familiar that we forget to pay attention to the details. Sometimes we hear the same story so often that we don't actually hear about God speaking to us. Lost and found. We stop there. Right? It's like the last week of school and you walk into the elementary school and there are tables, very long tables set up. Signs that say, parents, please collect your things before we give them all away. Right? The one glove of 99. Anybody else have this problem with mittens at our, like our house? Or socks. Does anyone find only one sock all the time until you clean out from under certain people's beds? Yes? Sound familiar? Occasionally we find them in the flower garden. I don't know. <laughs> but things that we lose. And little things like that we don't really pay attention to. Except if you're the one who does the laundry. But bigger things we do. Last year, I dropped and put on a necklace that my husband had given me. And it didn't clasp. So the pendant got lost. Let me tell you, that house has never been cleaner. I looked up and down and all around trying to find this pendant. I scrubbed and I scrubbed. And there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then there was rejoicing. I, however, did not do what this woman did. I did not call all my neighbors. And I did not say, I found a necklace, let's have a party. This is the part that doesn't make any sense. But to get the full scope of it, you have to go back to the Old Testament reading. Right? We have the people of Israel who have been saved in Egypt from slavery. And what's the first thing they do when Moses turns his back? They build a new model. Right. <laughs> they take everything that's valuable, they melt it down, and they build this calf to worship. A God they can touch and see. And then they tell lies and say, this is the God that brought you out of Egypt. And God is justified in his anger. He is going to wipe them from the face of the earth and start again. He's justified. He's just saved them from slavery. And their response is, oh look, there's something better. The most astonishing thing is, Moses changes God's mind. Did you notice that? Moses reminds God of his promise of mercy and love for these people. <coughs> you see, the arc of justice when it comes from God is long, but it is always towards love and mercy. I am paraphrasing Martin Luther King Jr. God's arc of justice is long and towards love and mercy. He's waiting for Moses to turn his head. He's waiting for Moses to say, these are your people. You just put my life in danger to bring them out of Egypt. You made promises to their ancestors. You have to keep your promise, and he does. Mercy and love. But even more than that, when Jesus reminds the Pharisees and the scribes that God is always focused on finding those who don't measure up, where does he go with it? Did you all notice that? The response doesn't make any sense. The 
The response is, I found one sheep, I risked the entire flock in the wilderness. I found this one sheep. Let's have a party. I found silver coins. I have nine of them, and I was missing one. I tore my whole house apart, and I found it. So let's spend the nine to celebrate finding the one. Does it make sense? No. That's the thing. When you are the God of all creation, you can be wasteful. You can love with wild abandon in a way that brings such joy. And we're called to do that. I'm not saying corrupt your household budgets. But when you find that which you have lost, rejoice. And rejoice in a manner that makes everyone else go, why are they so happy? And when you realize that you're the one who was lost, and you've been found even more of a reason to have a party. We spend a lot of time focused on sin. Okay, maybe not in some areas, but in general, the people of this world spend a lot of time focused on things that we have done wrong. Or, more importantly, what's that guy done wrong? Sorry. <laughs> and how am I better than that person? Because I'm at least not doing that. We all have our checklist, don't we? We all have our account balance. At least I'm not like that person. We certainly hear about it on the news all the time. We hear about it in politics all the time. We hear about it in schools. And it certainly plays out on social media constantly. We spend a lot of time focused on what we've done wrong and what others have done wrong. Stop it. Because that's not what we're called to do. We are called to say, man, I've done terrible, terrible things, and guess what? God loves me anyway, and my soup is still hot. Remember from the book? His mom fed him anyway. I've done terrible, terrible things, and I'm home. I'm in a place where I've loved and cared for and loved in a way that we're going to have a party. Scarlett and Aurora, this party's for you today. Okay? I saw a cake out there. I know it's for you. We would love it if you shared. But, you see, you're going to become part of our family. Did you know that? Your family, which is pretty good size, just got a thousand times bigger. Isn't that great? And it is a family that is supposed to do this, and I'm going to remind them right now. Here's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to, in everything that they do, show you who God is. Sometimes they're going to get it really wrong. But they're going to show you that when they get it wrong, we know how to say, I'm sorry, They're going to say, when you're yelling, we don't care. Come join us at our party. They're going to say, when you screw up, we love you. Come home. When we haven't seen you in a while, we love you. Come home. Now, you're going to have chores, because that's part of being a family. Right. Exactly. 
you're going to have things that you're going to be called to do as part of it. And part of that thing that you're called to do is to show the rest of the world how much God loves them. You're going to be called to have a party every day. Play the system. Okay? Every day. Can you hear me, Scarlett? Okay? You have a really important job while you're little. You have to remind us what joy looks like. And it is wild, and it involves jumping up and down and having wild ruckuses. And it involves loving like you have no balance sheet. <laughs> Just like that. Ruckus, ruckus. Okay. And these guys need you to remind them. Every single day. Got it? I know, it's so exciting. Yep. Every day. Got it? Do you all get it? What's your job? It's not a trick question. I just said it. What's your job? Louder. To be loving. To be loving. To love them. And when they screw up, to open your arms back to them and say, we love you. It's not just this half of the room's job, guys. It's everybody. Because we're going to screw up big time. And the arc of justice from God goes towards mercy and love always. That doesn't mean we're not held accountable because remember, they had to wander 40 years before they found the promised land. Right? But justice, love, mercy, with wild abandon. Just like that. Okay? Got it? Don't know why I'm the baby. Yes, it's that kind of joy. Because when we cry out to God, His head is turned. When we pray to God, our prayers make a difference. When we say to God, Create Create when we say to God, create a clean heart in me and renew a rest of Christ's spirit within me. We mean it. And that the church says, Amen. Amen.